I'm Steven with the Lines of Character Studio. At Lines of Character, I use your photo to create a one-of-a-kind, personalized character portrait. While I specialize in comic characters and superheroes, I also feature characters from your favorite games, TV, and movies. So whether it's one person or the whole family, I'll create an amazing portrait that's guaranteed to show off the hero in everyone. Lines of Character, personalized character portraits. Visit my shop at linesofcharacter.com. It's that slow intro. What's up? What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Fresh Delivery Show, a show about anything and everything that you need to know about Life After 30, which features candid conversation with co-hosts and audience. If this is your first time checking us out. You can download us on the Anchor app, but you can also find us on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and also YouTube. I am your host with the most. I am the Shaolin Fantastic. The Grand Booba in the building. It's Kelso. <laughs> it's always like that super professional hey hey what's up guys kelso here very super professional so we got a great episode tonight this is episode four we've made it all the way from season one to now episode four tonight's episode is about entrepreneurship after the age of 30 we got two special guests with us tonight um real quick kelso and, and, and grand boo have you ever been involved in entrepreneurship like running your own business or doing anything of that stuff. never never for me i have two companies right now dang big baller <laughs> what are these two companies like uh one is looking towards uh rental property real estate and the other one is a roofing company mm, okay gotcha gotcha all right so our first guest tonight is colin of infinity loops infinity loops is a maryland-based fpv pilots that fly a wide range of multi-rotors we aim to make our videos fun and sometimes even educational. From our meme videos poking fun at some things in, in this hobby to our Whooptorial Wednesday trick series. Welcome to the show, Colin. Thank you for joining us. Hey, guys. Thank you for having me. Nice. Thank you. All right. So our next guest, ooh, she is known in the DMV, D's Delectables Catering, Delectable Edible Creations, serving the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area, personal chef and caterer. Denise, welcome to the show. Hey, y'all. All right. So tonight's episode, so pretty much it's it's not a, no formal interview. We are just kind of want to, one, we wanted to kind of, in a way, kind of give flowers and also help recognize some of the businesses in our area, especially because a lot of times a lot of people tend to briefly talk about it, but they don't really get to know the person, their process, that what they went through to become an entrepreneur and, and kind of, I just feel like to to grow as a community is to kind of share your story because it inspires someone else and it's also another way of building another network with you um so uh you know we we can ask a general question i can go to you guys directly but let's let's go with like the first one uh colin like how did you become an entrepreneur like how did that start uh i don't like working for other people i guess that was the, <laughs> that was the best way uh, i can describe getting into that i don't know i've always just had a drive to be my own boss, I guess, kind of thing, or just have my own source of income, like not not have to go anywhere else for it. What about you, D? Uh, really, it was born just from a passion for cooking. Um, I just I love feeding people, and um, just this business sort of gives me the opportunity to. Um, you know, work on my craft uh, and, you know, serve my community, which is like such a blessing. So like when you guys first started your business, like how many, because I've, I've heard stories and I used to be a business owner myself. Uh, I used to own a design firm, graphic design firm as well. And we went through months to almost like a year deciding on like the logo and the name and stuff like that how long was that process like how did like how did it like how did infinity loop start out and how many like redos did you have to do uh we're on our second iteration of um labels as far as like designs this is like a newer logo well the, the american flag like fourth of july version um but the the newer logo is like 
uh, space themed kind of uh, galaxy themed. Um, and the original one I did my, myself, which was okay, but it was like a placeholder and we were just kind of waiting to find an artist to do a better job. So only one iteration for us. Is, uh, is your logo the one you're referring to on, uh, on YouTube? Like yes. Mm -hmm. let's, let's check that out. Look at that. Yeah, there you go. I love oh, it. That's pretty cool. cool. The, yeah, that's the second cool. version of it. Uh, the original version was nowhere near as nice. Uh, nice. That was the one I did my own, on my own. Okay. D, how, how'd you come up? I mean, obviously your name, you want to represent yourself. and it, You, you know, it worked. worked. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, I just, I wanted to make it plain. I make delectable, edible creations. Every meal is, you know, it's it's like art to me. And um, so I, I put my all in there. So I, I figured my name should be on there too. Is there a specific like cuisine, like a style? Is it kind of your style? It's mostly just my style. My family's from Haiti. So there's a lot of you know that at the the core uh of my uh cooking style it's very you know forward facing uh in my presentation and in the ingredients i use uh but um you know i i i just love food so i i make everything from haitian food to uh you know um, american soul food italian southern indian just if it tastes good to me, I'm I'm in somebody's mama's kitchen learning. Man, we should have done this episode live. We can have some food. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. you know, there's always the future. Well, yeah. I got a I got a, qu a quick question for the both of them. So we'll start with D and then go to Colin. It's uh, so now that you have your brand, what, what are your next steps? How are you going to expand uh, your brand, and, and what do you plan on doing for the future? Uh, I am working with uh, some internet savvy folks to assist me in, you know, getting, uh, you know, more forward facing social media presence, um, uh, fine tuning my, my logo and such, but um, really it's just getting out there and cooking. Um, that's, that's what's been working to, you know, get the business going thus far. So I'm, that's all I'm doing. <laughs> Go ahead, Colin. Uh, we are looking to get into, well, right now we're just basically do YouTube content for the most part, um, product reviews and things like that for businesses that are trying to sell a product uh, if it relates to FPV. But we're looking to expand into education. Uh, my wife is a first grade teacher for Montgomery County Public Schools. And uh, I wanted to try to work in her knowledge with education to try to take my knowledge of FPV and try to teach kids how to use these um, photography drones and stuff like that, since it's kind of going to be the future of photography. That's kind of the way it's going. So uh, we just thought it'd be neat to kind of lean towards education and then eventually maybe get a, a store in the future. But as far as expanding the brand, uh, just getting into education is really the big one. So let me ask you a question for everybody. How long has your, uh, your business been established for? Oh, goodness. I've been shilling chicken for like <laughs> 17 <laughs> years now. Um, I guess officially, officially 2003. Mm. Wow. All right, let me ask you a question. Chicken or beef? Chow both. <laughs> no, you got to pick one or the other. Who picks? No, we don't pick. We don't pick. Fair, 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 fair. That's a, that's a, um, I, I have a question for the both of y'all as well. Um, I was wondering, what were some of the challenges that y'all faced uh, when you first started your business? Mm. Please, for, if you if you like. For sure, for me, uh, being better about you know marketing myself, putting myself out there. You know, I, I know the product is, is great. I know the product is great, but, you know, the world doesn't know me. The world doesn't know the product until, you know, I get it out there. Uh, so uh, for sure, that piece of the business has been, um, I don't want to say a struggle, but it's it's definitely been a challenge. Okay. 
Uh, I think for, for us, the toughest part probably was um, getting started. It's kind of like getting started in, um, well, I'm sure you face similar challenges like with podcasting or uh, starting like a, a gaming YouTube channel or something like that, where it's a very uh, broad sea of creators that are already out there. So it's just for us, it was really just trying to stand out um, and, and bring something different that nobody else was doing. So that was kind of our, our motive in the beginning was just watch what everybody's doing and then figure out what they're not doing and just do that. So it's been working out for us so far. Okay. So in other words, you guys kind of like created your own niche per se. Yeah. And then you yeah. Just, okay. So uh, Colin, how, how long did, was your, how long has your business been established for? I didn't know. Uh, two years. Two, two years. years. Started in uh, January of 2020. Okay. So so both of you, both of you two have like two different time frames, right? But this is a question right. I yeah. can relate to. It's like, um, how have your priorities have changed from when you first started to now? I know, like, it's I don't know if you guys have kids, and you mentioned you're married, and like I know things are different, but it's like I know once the business starts rolling, like a different beast of priority has to come out at that point. So, what kind of priorities have you have you seen change from when you started till now? Uh just wanting to to create more stability and you know structure in the business as opposed to before it was like oh yeah i'll do this this bridal shower i'll do this birthday party and you know as opposed to being a little bit more strategic um and you know instead of waiting for the business to come to me you know sort of going out there after it um so for sure, that's that's definitely a, a huge difference from from the beginning stages till now. Mm. What about you, Colin? Uh, yeah, I don't know that ours. I don't think we've been doing it long enough just yet. For our priorities, still have just been grinding, getting content out, and and just trying to make sure that it's not garbage. You know, like we don't want to just be throwing content out to throw content out kind of thing. Um, it felt like a lot of the hobby was already doing that. that. That was kind of the vibe we picked up was that people were just kind of putting anything out there. Uh, so we just really wanted to make sure we were focused on putting out something quality. And we still just focus on that. Uh, I don't know. I think we're still pretty early stages to be changing our priorities just yet. That makes sense. So social media has taken a big like turn it's almost like a cultural change for us you know especially yeah. in our in our age brackets um mid 2000 it came out and really was about you know connecting people from schools and then it took on a whole nother beast and then became uh an, an advertising genius now and a lot of this social media is all connected to each other what do you feel would be the next wave of type of market me uh you know media marketing that you would be able to use because social media is one big thing. Like, you know, you're, you're hitting all, all the different areas. What do you think would be the next media marketing tool? Wow. It's a good question. Metaverse. Is the metaverse. <laughs> wow. I was, I was waiting for someone to say that the metaverse. <laughs> that was a very astute question, my friend. Right. I mean, you can't really go. It's social media is worldwide. I mean, it's global. You can't, you can't it's the biggest it. thing out there. It's, it's free. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to beat. It's, it's unfortunate. Hard to beat. It's yeah. an unfortunate beast that you have to learn to deal with. I hate social media with a passion. Indeed. And uh, yeah, so yeah. doing all of this—that's been my biggest challenge. Really, has just been staying up with social media. It's really hard to keep up a, a presence. It's like a but you have to. Like, right. even if you hire a company to do your marketing, the first place they're going to market is social media. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. So yeah. why not just do it yourself instead of pay to third a third party? Yeah, it's free. Indeed. You can, but if you have the income to pay someone in your company just to run everything for you, photos, the media, the website, the updating, the, the Twitter accounts, you know, you know, I, I feel like the hashtag has taken over everything where it's like, if you don't hashtag what's of what's relevant. Your stuff will either sit in the middle for a little bit, but once you start building the buzz, the algorithm starts changing because everything now is all like a digital code. We had a conversation about this. Uh, uh, there's three of us in our group of pie. So I keep saying us. Um, so I don't sound like I'm talking to multiple me's um, <laughs> there's uh there's three of us in this group and I had a conversation. One of them is uh, two years older than me. So he's a little further into his later thirties and um, he doesn't quite understand 
social media. He likes to absorb it. He loves to absorb social media, but he's not quite sure how the algorithm works yet. And I, I'm still figuring it out as well, but I've been kind of dabbling in it a little longer, I guess. But uh, we had a conversation uh, a couple of weeks ago. He posted, we just started posting on a TikTok account, which I sold <laughs> out for us. I was like, okay, we can't do it. There's no reason for us to be on TikTok. And then I looked up FPV stuff on TikTok and there's just, it's saturated like crazy. So we needed to get in. So we're in now, but we posted two videos, one I put up and I hashtagged like crazy with FPV related stuff and whatever was in the video. Another one, he said his argument was if you don't put any hashtags, it just puts it out to everyone. So you get a lot of views on it. So we, we both did a post on the same account, uh, same day. And um, his, I think capped at like 70 views or something. And then it just died. And the one that I did just climb, I think it maxed at like 300 something. It wasn't much more, but um, the interaction was there was more likes and comments on the one that I did. And with his, there was just views, no, no other things. Cause it just went out to random people that saw it and they're like, what the hell is this? And they just, you know, they moved past it, but TikTok's weird. Cause it gives you a view, whether they like it or not, they didn't have to click on it. Like with YouTube, you got to click on it. Yeah. Go to the video. So, you know, they were at least interested. TikTok, you don't need to be interested. They're just throwing stuff at you. So <laughs> if you really, those, those hashtags, like you were saying, those are, are everything. Those are so critical for uh for just building or just getting your your message to the right ears because there are so many ears listening on social media and if you just throw it out to everybody you know you might get lucky but you got you're better off just giving in to the stupid hashtag game and just <laughs> <laughs> as embarrassing and cringy as it feels to do it you know you got to do all of them it, that's exactly what Kira was saying. To just you have to, you got to go where the wind's going. Hashtag roof. Hashtag new. <laughs> yeah, right. If you feel like an idiot. You're like, of course it's for a roof, you know. But like, you gotta do it. Yeah. And you'd be amazed. It's like, why were there 1.5 million posts about a roof today? <laughs> right. I mean, sometimes you can be clever with your hashtags and put down hashtag raise the roof. You know. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Oh, uh, that should be all the bloopers of like what's going on behind <laughs> the roof. <laughs> the roof. Um, oh. man. So I, I got a question. So, you know, as an entrepreneur, obviously your your product and your brand is typically of a representation of who you are, but the product is what actually goes to the client, whether if it's something digital, in, in, in your instance, it's something tangible. One's edible, another one is visual. Right. So and everyone has a different process when they're creating their product. So what is your daily process when you when, when you wake up that make that makes you want to create something new and something that stands out? Or if you have like a big task or a project to do, like what what is your process? Like, do you have like a special routine or is there like some super, super weird superstition? Like I coach basketball and I and I touch the steering wheel. I whip it with my hand, right hand all the way through. I touch the nice. I touch the knobs of the volume. Like I turn it all the way, turn it all the way back down. Obviously, when the you know cards off. It's just like weird. I have to touch everything with my right hand. <laughs> what is your process? <laughs> Definitely not as involved. Um, <laughs> although clearly, I, I mean, maybe I need to work on something. Um, I my process is very client driven. So, um, you know, I'll sit down with uh, whoever whoever I'm cooking for and get a feel for their their likes, their dislikes, if there's any, if we're cooking specifically for an ailment um, or, or, you know, just, or for an event, you know, it's, it's very much tailored around, you know, whatever their needs are. Um, and that's sort of where I get my energy from. Um, and, you know, I, it, it, I, I hope that they give me, you know, license to just, you know, Give me a couple of uh, keywords and then I go with it. Um, but that's that's usually where I I'm able to shine the best. Is there anything specific that you like making over something else, like whether it be baking, cooking, barbecuing? Making um, you know, I I started out baking actually um, with the cooking, but um, the the savory meals is is where it's at for me. Um, main dishes breakfast lunch dinner feeding people like i said that's 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 my happy place 
I, have you heard of a mukbang before? Yes. Have you done yeah. one? I have not. Can I've we watched do it? several with my Can child. Can we do one? We do a weekly segment called Pop These on pop culture. We do food reviews. We do video reviews. Can we venture into your food one night? Oh, definitely. definitely. I would love to. <laughs> not going to say no. <laughs> so, Colin, what about you? What is like your daily process for when you wake up to create your best content or if there's some project that requires a little bit more energy and attention? Uh. I've always kind of had a drive to just create um, videos in general. I've always, since I was a little kid, uh, my father was, uh, he worked for Channel 9, uh, WUSA in DC. Uh, he was a photographer, a cameraman for a, the majority of my life. Um, and he also edited videos for them after hours. He would, he would shoot all day, go on scenes and, and film reporters. And then uh, he would clock out, clock back in and go into the editing booth and just sit and edit the same stuff that he shot earlier in the day. And then they would air it later on. Um, but when I was a kid, uh, he would take my brother and I with him to the studio late at night and down in DC. And we would sit for hours and just, he would show us how to edit, cut video and cut live feeds and stuff like that of uh, reporters just talking about new speed bumps and just boring, nonsensical, you know, BS, but it, uh, it taught me a lot about editing and presenting video and uh, packaging a video and cutting fat and stuff like that. Um, and it just gave, I think I got that drive from him. Uh, I was just born to just want to create things. I, I did like little stop motion videos with a, an old camera when I was a kid where, you know, so cool. <laughs> take a, a picture and then move the you know, little action figure one little bit and then take another picture and move it and, uh, and stitch them all together. And um, Kelsey has been in some of my videos when uh, years ago we, we grew up. <laughs> oh, we got to see those. Yeah, they're still around somewhere. I'll dig them up. Um, oh, we'll those, those Call of Duty videos. We did, uh, <laughs> yeah, we just did like skits. It was just fun, funny yeah. things that we thought about uh, or that I just think about. I don't know. I, my brain's just odd. Sometimes I just have fun little weird ideas and we just run with them. Uh, and people seem to enjoy them, so I we just keep doing it. The uh, speaking, you know how you mentioned about TikTok and like mm -hmm. you kind of like when you first saw it, you're like ah, but then you realize how popular it was. Yeah, same thing. I was just like, man, I would never buy, not buy or whatever, download TikTok, and I just feel like it's such a a TV bopper kind of thing for like kids. Yeah. Dude, I got friends like looking up the news on TikTok. I'm like, what? Like, I know, crazy. I know, it's crazy. Yeah, <clears throat> it just took over so quick. So. You got like I said, you got to go where the wind blows. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, you get you get left behind. So we're. I was the last holdout out of the three of us in the group. I was like, no, no, no. There's no reason. <laughs> like I knew why they both downloaded TikTok. I didn't want to talk to them about that. But I knew why they downloaded it. And I was like, I don't, I don't think we're posting that kind of content. So I don't even know <laughs> wow. Are they over thirty? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, then it's okay. Totally. It's part of the part of the uh, part of the series for the season. Oh man, but going back to TikTok, like I, you know, personally, you know, I have it. I'm not gonna lie, the first delivery show we have, we haven't really posted a lot of stuff. It's more for us just to use it for content research or when we're looking up stuff about our guests. Um, it's not like we're finding anything like crazy or dirty or anything, but, um, <laughs> but it's it's ironic that you talk about the stop motion. That's like so popular right now on TikTok and, and Instagram because you know really? Instagram lets you put like 15 to like I think 30 seconds max. Like yeah. they do the action figures and it's like mm -hmm. a whole theme story and it's like really amazing. Yeah. Like these guys are having 3.1 million hits. I'm like, oh my God, that's because, wild, they're making, dude. because they're like hashtag like Street Fighter versus Kobe Bryant or something. I'm like, what? <laughs> that's so like random. And so many people like watch it and I'm like hooked on it. Like now I subscribe and I follow. Yeah. Yeah, man. If I only would have uh, been born a little later, I would have been, yeah. uh, I would have been, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was yeah. like 11 or 10 or 11 making those videos. Uh, and then as soon as I could get a YouTube account, I made one uh, with Kelsey and his brother and another friend of ours. And we all just started posting videos of just whatever. Didn't, wow. didn't matter. Just fun stuff. I just liked editing. I was I just I enjoy making videos. Wow. Right on. Nice. nice. <laughs> all right. So this 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 part of the show, we're going to do like a little quick game called Hit It or Quit It. Pretty much it's, it's a, just a flash question. I'm going to ask you a question and just whatever comes off your head, you just respond to it. It's your own criteria, so you can you can explain why you picked that, etc. There's no right or wrong answer. You guys good with that? Sure. We'll, we'll we'll start off with like an easy one, real quick. You ready? Beer or wine? Depends on the Ooh. meal. 
There's no criteria. You just got to say it right now. I'm handing you beer or wine right here. Here you go. Beer. Beer. Mm, okay. Um, would you spend more money on marketing or your employees? Employees. That's a tough question because you spend more on marketing, you make more for the company, you can pay your employees more. You spend so more on your employees, long, your employees quick, quick, do better for you, and, and they, they bring the work. <laughs> exactly. They'd be doing good to begin with. But yeah, no, I, I would agree. I'd say, I think paying them up front would be better. Okay. Um, LLC or sole proprietor? LLC. Yeah. Yeah, I have to agree with that. Got to have full ownership. Make sure you still have a house to live in. <laughs> 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 All right, for your your new office space, for your new two hundred thousand dollar kitchen, okay, would you lease or own it? Lease. I'd love a two hundred thousand dollar kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> two hundred thousand dollar office. Uh, yeah, I'd probably lease it. I wouldn't. I don't think I'd buy one. Okay. All right. Um, partnerships or remain solo? I'm, uh, I'm involved in several partnerships already. So yeah, partnerships for sure. I love working with other people. Yeah, definitely. Partnerships with the right, um, with the right terms. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Golden. Yeah. Definitely no slimy partnerships. <laughs> right. <laughs> Where you're like pushing mobile games and stuff like that. I'm not doing that. Okay. Majority partner or equal partner? Ooh. Equal. Mm. Equal. You can never have equal though, can you? For us? Yeah. Three ways. Yeah. yeah. What's it's three good. people, LLC. One has to be 34%. Yeah, it'd probably be whoever does the majority of the work. We, we would all agree on that, us three. Or, or, you, or the person that does the taxes. Let them take <laughs> yeah, yeah. <true. laughs> but like, you know how you're good with math. Go ahead. You do it, man. You can have that 4%. <laughs> what about you, D? Partnership or solo? Partnership where it works. Mm, okay. Um, gelato or ice cream? Mm. I don't know what gelato is, so ice cream. It's a it's a softer ice cream. Like so soft serve ice cream like that. So ice yeah. cream at a warmer temperature. <laughs> it has like a it's texture. It's something to ice. do with the fat to moisture ratio and the point of freezing for the ingredients it makes a different mouth feel mm -hmm. definitely That's gelato different. okay okay so it's like a mix between yogurt and ice cream actually yeah that's a good way of explaining it in a way yeah it's like a I'm sorry, i was calling i didn't know what a gelato it's an italian was. it's yeah. kind of like an italian ice almost but, but it's creamy yeah okay. but it's actually really good all like right frozen so yogurt is that like what you're talking about? It's kind of like a frozen yeah. yogurt, but not as creamy as a frozen yogurt. So it's oh, like yeah. Italian ice and uh, a frozen yogurt. Okay. A little, fr little stiffer. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll ask you a, a digital a digital question since uh, the gelato was kind of unknown. And we'll, we'll get you some gelato. I'll make sure Kelsey, next time he comes hang out with you, he'll bring some beer and gelato. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm not bringing I'm gelato. I'm lactose intolerant. I no, have to <laughs> Actually, that would be a great episode to see how many y'all can eat. And <laughs> oh my god, he, he oh, runs god. off the camera first. All right, um, GoPros or digital SLRs? Oh, GoPros, yeah, for sure. Have you seen what's that new camera that's out right now that does the 360 and like you can put on like a selfie sticks, but it like uh, right. Insta 360s? Yeah, what's your take on that? I love them. I have a bunch of I have a bunch of different cameras laying around, but um, yeah, Insta 360s are a big one. Um, this is uh, a new camera. Their Insta 360 is working on called the Peanut, uh, which is itty bitty, but it shoots 1080p and mm. uh, self stabilizing, which is also pretty neat. It has a little magnetic battery that just snaps on. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, nifty, and it fits on all my little tiny quads. Uh, I actually did some uh, film work for uh kelsey for fun just flew uh with that camera got really nice hd footage with that tiny little thing uh, but yeah i love um gopros gopros are, are awesome um what so what makes the insta 360 completely different from a gopro uh like how do you use it in your in your line of work 
Well, the Insta360, the the one that actually shoots 360 pictures, is I think it's called the Insta360 1R. The company's name is Insta360, which makes it really confusing. Uh, but they make different cameras. Um, and the one that they make that shoots 360, I think it's called the Insta1 or something like that. But anyhow, uh, most FPV people don't use that camera right now. Gotcha. But if they do end up using it, it'll be used for things like virtual tours of real estate, like houses, big houses. You can do really slow fly throughs with GoPros. I'm not GoPros. I'm sorry, with those 360 cameras. And then if somebody's watching that video on YouTube or something like that, they can use that built in 360 feature where you hold your mouse down and you can move the camera. So you could if you're flying through a house, you you know, maybe you wanted to look behind a door or at a wall in particular, or like you, you saw like a hole somewhere you wanted to look, you'd be able to move the camera and kind of see. So I guess that would be one good application for it in my line of, of work. Yeah, and, and to tag on to Colin, because since he did the video for the company, um, like when you sometimes when you do a GoPro, like a wide angle video shit video shot, it gives that kind of like a fisheye effect. Yeah. But with the with the Insta three sixty. It, it, it was clean. It, yeah. I mean, yeah. It we, we, it's on our company website. I mean, it looks awesome. No, the, only that, the only thing that bugs me about GoPro, because I got like three of them, is the sound. It always sounds like you're inside in a box or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I, I fly with them. They're attached onto a quad. So, like, sounds usually not, I, I usually delete the sound and just put music in anyhow, just because it's, it's just wind, really. That's all you hear is just the motors and wind. Mm, um, yeah. So yeah, I guess if I was using it for something else, I probably would use a different camera than a GoPro if I needed to record sound. Gotcha. D. So here's a question for you. So for every person that I've met that's into the culinary arts, catering, and and just a, a real a real foodie, what is one food that you like cannot stand? That's like disgusting to you. There's liver. gotta be liver, liver, yes. liver, mm. liver, and liver. liver is the worst. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I can't do it. Yeah, I can't well. do it. No matter how I it's cook much. it, I cook it several different ways. I can't eat it. The texture. It's the yeah. texture. It's like, ugh, right. It's. Yeah. Ugh, I just. I can't. I can't. Have you? Had, just, have you had cow tongue? I have. Doesn't bother me. It's. It's okay. It's, the texture is a little funky, but it's fine. Favorite cooking show? Sounds like you have a few. Probably. <laughs> probably the French chef. Old school, Julia Child. Mm. Classic. Mm. She gave great technique, great basic skill type stuff introduced a whole new world of, of uh, cooking to, you know, mainstream America. Um, so yeah, that, that would probably be my favorite. So I'm more, I'm more of a hell's kitchen because I love the jokes. And I was legit about <laughs> <it>. <laughs> He's so mean though. He's so mean. It's very much like a proper glimpse into kitchens. Like, Mm. Kitchens are, are are like you have to have a thick skin to to work in a kitchen. Um, aside favorite, from, you know, yeah, having the mail, so. favorite was the the two breads. You're an idiot sandwich now. No, <laughs> oh my god, that episode that had me rolling. Right. Um, I was gonna ask you guys um, if you were to be able to meet three celebrities to have dinner with, dead or alive, who would they be? Hmm. To eat dinner with or cook dinner for? Well, you know what? For your case, uh, <laughs> cook dinner for. Oh, man. Hardcore. Um, <clears throat> my maternal grandmother. Hmm. Uh, Prince, just because I feel like he'd give like honest feedback, um, and then you know maybe we could go play basketball after. <laughs> um, Have pancakes. 
Maybe pancakes in the morning. Who knows? Um, he would say it in his like super deep voice. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> right. I can only amazing, hope. The most amazing sweat I've ever had. On this <laughs> I'm going to go with myself. <laughs> super deep voice. <laughs> I'm going to take a shower in the Lake Minnetonka. Waters of Minnetonka. <laughs> um, yeah, and I don't know who the third person would be. Um, I don't know. We can get back to you. How about you, Connor? Yeah. Who would you love to sit down with, whether a celebrity dead or alive, and have dinner with them, just kind of hang out and talk to them? Elon Musk. At what okay. age? At what age? <laughs> the young Elon or Ooh. Elon? Now? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I think Elon now would be more entertaining because he's weirder. So I think Elon now. Okay. I think that would be a better meal. Okay. Or a better show with the meal. Um, mm -hmm. You guys would be talking all night. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Uh, I'm a huge nerd when it comes to just anything tech or anything like that. So, uh, big fan. Uh, yeah. So, Elon Musk, uh, Hendrix. Mm, that's Wood, a good one. Wood, Woodstock. I mean, yeah, doesn't matter. Whenever, whenever. I feel like it'd be pretty wicked to meet just at any age. Yeah. Um, and Clapton. Oh, that's a good one. Eric Clapton. I feel like there'd be some good stories there. Yeah. Nice. Grand Boo, who would you want to sit down with? Name two. Oh, man. For me, it would be... For host, we're cutting it down to two. <laughs> All right. I would say... I would say Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. Damn, that would be a hell of a yeah. What about you, Kelso? Jesus and Bob Marley. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm just gonna. I'm just curious about religion. Like, did it sweet baby, know? young baby Jesus, or like, <laughs> like <laughs> right before he like, walked down the road with the like post Jesus, like after three days resurrected Jesus. I want to see that. Oh, the ghost Jesus. <laughs> yeah, oh, I wow. want to see that. Jesus and Bob Marley. I'm surprised they don't have a Funko Pop of Ghost <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> what about you, Shaolin? Man, uh, I would say George Lucas. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, I think Kobe Bryant. Yeah, I think Kobe good. Bryant, especially after he retired. Um, you know, a lot of people doubted athletes that they could do things after, and he excelled. You know, he got an academy. He got a, was it Oscars or? Academy. An Oscar, an Oscar, an Oscar. He writes children's book. He was a marketing genius, and he was really hands on. And you know, I respect that. You know, he's gone through a lot. You know, from let's be transparent, from the rape charge to what he is now. That he became a woman's advocate, and he's a very like big role model for um, a, a lot of young athletes. And also, I think like um, business people too. Like he did a lot of like interviews on business, and I thought that was like kind of be kind of a cool person to kind of pick his brain. And then plus on top of that, like I'm into basketball, so I would pick his brain on like. Like what really happened in the Nike room? Why'd you pick that ugly looking shoe or something? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, um, let me let me ask you uh, this question: Like, do you feel that when you first started up your business, that you had to take a loan out, or you kind of like like? Cause I hear people you will either take out a credit card and max it out and use that strictly for their business to help also build their business points and stuff like that. I've heard people go to friends and family and ask for a loan. I know some people that will go to the bank, some others just pull money right out of their savings. Like what was the direction that you guys chose when you first started out, when you actually start seeing the momentum building? Like do you ask for others or do you pull it out on your own? I was straight self-funded, straight out of savings. From beginning till current now? Indeed, yep. Wow, nice. Yeah, same here. Same. We haven't we haven't had any need to borrow any money or anything, and definitely don't want to if we don't have to. So indeed, uh, stay yeah. stay debt free. Mm -hmm. Kelso, you Kelso, you mentioned you had two businesses. Do you uh, do you pull out a pocket? That sounded really inappropriate the way I said it. You pull out pull out <laughs> a pocket. Like, 
Jeez, come on now. Oh For my god. Last 20 oh, years. Yeah. You could derate it, Shaolin. Jeez Louise. Man. Thank God it's life after 30, not like life after 15. <laughs> so I, I got lucky um with so the the second company we pulled out of pocket just like you know establish an LLC and we're gonna pull out of pocket using investments to, to get these properties. But the first company I, I got lucky where uh Kieran, the majority partner of the company, did use a lot of his out-of-pocket money to actually establish it because I was working another career, and then I came on as a part owner after it was established. Gotcha. But now we've gotten fortunate where everything that we're doing, it, it's strictly funds from the company. Everything is funds from the company now. I mean, knock on wood. Yeah, let's try to keep it that way. Knock on wood, still we're we're going good. You know, hired two employees, funds from the company, marketing funds from the company. Yeah, that's awesome. Do you guys feel like so we are technically in year two? I call it the COVID wars, right? Because that's what we're in. And let's just be real about it. There's gonna be a video game, Call of Duty, the COVID wars, probably be like <laughs> 10 years from now. Right? Yeah. Because it's gonna involve Russia, Ukraine, United States, Afghanistan, hey, Korea. Yeah. So, at this so, point, yeah. yeah. Hopefully, Infinity New War, they take care of it. Hopefully, it's not another company. But anyway, so with COVID-19, like, do you feel like COVID-19 helped you realize that being in business for yourself was more important than ever? Or is it kind of, you know, was it a motivating factor? Or was it something kind of like, ooh, I got to reevaluate and do some things? Or how did that impact your thought process? And how did it impact you guys during those, within those two years? Uh, COVID actually sort of bolstered my um, enthusiasm for keeping the business going just because um, eating is one of those things that can sort of stand the, the <laughs> test of time. Like people want to, people want to eat, you know, regardless of, of what's going on um, elsewhere. So, you know, <clears throat> I just sort of rolled with the punches and contactless delivery and all the, you know, various and sundry um, internet accessories and apps and things. It's just sort of roll with, 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 with what comes. I, I will say, and I'll be honest too, that I am started thinking in the last two years, I've ordered out more than, than I've ever had oh, yeah. in my yeah. life. And, and just looking at social media, um, I, I can't give you an accurate number. If I gave you an accurate number, it would be like some type of BS number. But anyway, but I just felt it was really high that I saw that there was a rise in medicinal sales and the rise of food delivery. And I was just like, that's a pretty good correlation of munchies right there. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. Just stay hungry, happy, and sleepy. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> it goes hand in hand. You're safe at home. So, yeah. Uh, how about you, Colin? How did uh, COVID-19 impact you? Uh we started right before it did so um really poor timing i think on its part uh but it worked out in our favor uh because everybody was gone then so every fun location that we would drive past and be like man I'd really like to fly that place but usually there's tons of people there working businesses whatever it's a ghost town now nobody's there so it's like our playground we just we could go to anywhere we wanted and uh, didn't have to bother anybody and just fly our big, the scary quads, the real loud ones with open props that are super dangerous to fly around other people. So we normally would never, um, but these places were just empty. So that kind of helped. Um, it also helped us. Everybody was at home. So we were creating internet content and um, there was kind of this vacuum in the community where people were just looking for something, just anything to watch while they were all stuck at home. Uh, so, yeah, it, it was a blessing and a curse. I, we just made the best of it the uh, best we could. Nice. So knowing what you guys know now, is there anything you would have done differently when you first started out in your business? I'll tell you this. When I first started my graphic design firm, and the the weird part was the business was already started. I came in as the third owner later on, and – not trying to sound arrogant, but we, I boosted that company up, um, 150% in just revenue gross. Um, I just felt that if we had just decided to do this full time, cause we only did it part time, 
if we had done a full time the, the first one, we would have been. I'll just tell you right now, we would have been custom ink. And I had that idea already. Yeah. I was like, damn it, we didn't because no one wanted to go all in. And that's the downside of the partnership. That's my personal. Right. Yeah. So it goes back to you really need to know your partner's goals, short term, long term, you know, et cetera. So, so what would we want? Hell of a motivator and get people to get over that fear of taking the leap. Yeah. Well, what about you, dude? What would you have done differently? Hmm. Uh, definitely would have put more time into the back end, you know, the, um, the legal stuff, the websites, the, you know, the nuts and bolts of the business part of it. I would have gotten ahead of a lot more of that. I'm not gonna lie. I look at your food, like, dude, like, <laughs> are, you deliver, are, you del are you delivering right now? It's like, I am actually, dude, like, I, I just really? did like four different, four deliveries to now, three deliveries and one pickup. I was gonna say, I'm a we, patient. You got me hungry over here, right? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, are you, uh, do you deliver yourself or do you have a team that does it for you? Uh, right now, it's just me, but I'm working oh, on. Dude, wow. I feel bad if I ordered right now, I, that you're coming out this late because I. Dude, I am always ready. <laughs> what, what do you have? Collaboration have? with uh, drone delivery, the same content Ooh. or DoorDash. DoorDash. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I'm working on DoorDash. So um, let me tell you, the first time I didn't mean to cut you off. I, the first time I saw a drone was four years ago. I'm sitting outside. And I hear this like loud buzzing sound. And first thing I thought, I was just like, what the hell is this? Like, is that like a bee or something? Mm -hmm. It just came out of nowhere. And I'm not going to lie, I ran because I thought we were being like invaded by something. Right? That's like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, you know, we see, we see Transformers. I don't know what's going to happen. And then it's a drone with the four propellers. And it went to my front of my door, dropped the box off real quietly, backed up, and you could hear it click. So obviously it took a picture and it just zoomed off. And then I looked it up and I was just like, you know, they have those, what's it, DJI, mm -hmm. the Osmos. And I was like, I thought those are illegal because, you know, where I live is so close to DC. And then I found out that was part of Amazon because the warehouse yeah. is in Laurel, Maryland. I was just yeah. like, ah, but I, I've only seen it once. I haven't seen it since. I'm like, what is going on? Like, now, they prototyped them and I think people were stealing them. So they, they may have stopped. Yeah. <laughs> I know that oh. they, did, they did a test run of it, but I do think people were stealing them. I mean, that's true. All you have to do is just like take your hand and just smack it down. They're like they're like almost fifteen hundred dollar drones, so I don't know why Ooh. I wouldn't be just sending them out there on their own. Definitely oh, not. Man. But Wait. it's Amazon. Do whatever you want with them. Go that ahead. is true because they'll just be like, oh, and we'll just send it back to China. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, real talk, deep. What do you have on your menu right now? <laughs> um, let's see. What do I have? I've got pork. Glio, which is um, a marinated and fried uh, pork picnic shoulder uh, with fried plantains. I've got rice with pigeon peas. I've got my signature crab cake. Ooh. I've got smashed Yukons. I think I'm out of broccolini and I think I'm out of oxtail soup. You, oh my God. My oxtail. Is, that, that you have medicated crab cakes? Uh, everything I make can be medicated, but uh, no, they are not medicated. Okay, not not pre. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, text me. Yeah, I as of last year, I um expanded into the edibles. Okay. Uh, world. So, Maryland has been slacking with edibles, so I'm glad to see that you are spearheading the effort. Yes, I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> yeah. Do you feel? Do you guys feel like we'll be fully legal within the next five years for Maryland? Five years. <laughs> I heard everyone sigh. <laughs> The, the, the feet dragging with Maryland is ridiculous. On Indeed. Any of like, this. there's lots of talk, right? There's a there's lot so of chatter. Much, so much But chatter. nobody's, nobody's, nobody moving knows anything. Yeah. I feel like once we met there. again, we did a lot of talking. <laughs> we'll get back right. to eight months. We had great, we had great discussion points. Yeah. 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 Sure. I, I, do, I do feel like once they approve farming in the area, I think it would be. Kind of like California, like you know, like Vegas is one thing, you yeah. know, and most of these other states, obviously West Coast, they all have the capability to farm. We just don't have that. I have. I thought I'd see it faster spread through Maryland when I saw DC go uh, recreational. I, I figured it would spread quicker through Maryland, but 
so far they're holding strong. Yeah, that is true. That is true. D, we're we're gonna text after the show. I really do want some food. Make it happen. <laughs> I'm trying to be a fat boy before midnight. So, Kelsey, <laughs> sorry, I lost the bet as of right now. It's my cheat week. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> yeah, we, so, we, had, we had a bet. I want to contribute to the delinquency of a Shaolin now. <laughs> Can't say no to crab cakes though. Like it's not like I eat crab cakes that often, right? So I mean, like, smart oh, man. I'm not available, not. ready to go. Let's let's do it. You know, yeah. they're not they're not just any crab cakes. They're edible crab cakes. You see what I'm saying? Mm. True. That's what Maryland does best: crab cakes and football. Yep, that's what we do. <laughs> what else are we known for? There, I feel like there's something else. Oh, uh, we're known for lacrosse. No, 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 no. Yeah. food, food wise. Wild oh, food wise. Black eyed Susan, isn't it the flower? The flower, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, we're, we're known for crabs, and an Oriole is our crab state bird. And is it really? Yeah, old, uh, is for it? old bay. Oh, yeah, yeah old, old bay, bay season crab related. Okay. We, we are, yes, you know what's funny? Like, I went to California and they're like, Yeah, your Chesapeake season. And I'm like, What? And I'm like, You mean old bay? And they're like, No, Chesapeake. I'm like, What is Chesapeake? And it's the McCormick and Smith, it's the same thing, but it's just like they can't. I'm like, But oh, that's not old bay. So, like, the easy gift to get someone from out of town, especially they like seafood, is just buy them Old Bay as a gift. It's like, the Walmart brand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that blue and red is really the Walmart logo. <laughs> they tricked you. So, so I actually got a I, – I, sorry for changing it, but I got a uh, an, uh, question about you guys. How do you guys deal with negative comments about your business? What's that we're calling? Like, what do you do afterwards? Do you – change the way you do stuff do you just say screw you it depends depends on the comment he uh, sends drones after those people <laughs> 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 they want to attack me and it was called a decepticon okay drone squad. <laughs> uh it depends on the comment if I, I can take creative criticism uh i i give it when it's asked and i can definitely take it even if i don't ask for it um, but just I, I know that I'm there serving a purpose to make content that they enjoy watching. So I do take comments to heart if it's a suggestion or um, if somebody thinks I did something wrong or could have done it better or whatever. Um, but if it's just like an outright negative comment, um, you know, I'm in my 30s. I don't pay any attention to that kind of stuff. I just that's just whatever. I have no time for it. <laughs> that's true. What about you, D? How do you handle uh, it if you had negative comments? I I haven't really had very many. Um, I mean, I'm not trying to you know toot my own horn and tap, pat myself on the back, but um, like I said in the beginning, I try to um, really get a feel for what my client wants so that whatever that final product is, that they're happy with it. And um, that, you know, nine times out of 10, any negative feedback I get is because, you know, maybe something wasn't plated at the time that they wanted as opposed to, you know, actual flavor um, mm. that I can deal with all day long. I'll be late, but the food's going to be amazing. Can't, I won't can't... be late, but, you know. <laughs> In can't, theory, can't rush art, right? Pardon can't, me. Can't rush art. This no. is true. This no. is true. I mean, you know, to to an extent, depending, you know, if the, if it's a party or a wedding or something, you know, you sort of got to stick to a timeline. Yeah. Um. So, what what kind of advice would you give to someone who's trying to come up into the FPV world, who wants to become an inspiring caterer, you know, a master sous chef, you know, running their own business? What kind of advice would you give a starting or you know someone that wants to learn to be an entrepreneur in that in your field and, and colin before you do that can you actually just show people on screen what an fpb is for people that don't know what an fpb is what a quad looks like yeah yeah do you, do you have one next to you sorry yeah. <laughs> we've been saying fpv the whole time but i don't know so this, the, this the is uh, a full size this is a five inch mm. um, the propeller from tip to tip is five inches uh, this holds a GoPro full size. So this is a little silicone 3D printed um, camera mount in the front here. So this records independently. And then I actually watch what I'm doing through this lens here. This little camera sends a signal through the antenna back to goggles that I wear. Uh, and then I control a flight controller that's in the body 
it's, it's behind all this stuff. You can't see it, but that controls every access of the way this moves. So it 360 degrees in every direction. Um, but this is the biggest size. And this is actually, we avoid doing videos for our YouTube with this. This is more for professional work. Uh, on our YouTube, we use these tiny itty bitty little quads here. Dang. Who, um, wow. The same thing. These are 75 millimeter as opposed to five inch uh, propellers. Uh, and these are more toy grade. So these you can just whack into each other and stuff. They're very small and light. Um, but nobody was doing the kind of stuff we're doing now with these when we started. Uh, it was very niche what we were doing. So that's why we avoided these is because everybody was flying these because they're so much easier to fly. You have tons of power. Uh, you know, the, you, can, you can fly right into the wind. It doesn't matter. With these, if you go outside and it's, a, it's like five mile an hour wind, you're all over the place. So it's way harder to do these. But um, if you can get content with it, it's been great. So those are the two basics, though, that we fly. How many have you lost during the process when you first had to learn how to use uh, it? Not one yet. Myself. Nice. Do have a great video. Uh, we do um, a, we do a bunch of different series on our channel, but one of our series is called Where Will We Whoop Wednesdays? And that's these are called whoops, these little tiny ones. Uh, the ducks that go around them, the protection so that the propellers don't hurt anybody, those are called whoops. So the, the actual thing is it's called a whoop. But we get into my truck, we all three of us, and we just – drive and someone picks a direction each time so every intersection we come to left right straight uh and then wherever we end up we just fly there we find a, a fun creative way to fly the space and make a video out of it and in one of our uh where will we whoop wednesdays uh, one of our members lost one of his quads on top of a roof so the second half of the video is the rescue of trying to get it back <laughs> off of the roof uh we eventually got it we had to come back the next day with an 18 foot ladder but uh, we did a lot of lassoing with a electrical cord first trying to get it, which is hilarious to watch him fail trying to get his whoop off of a roof. Nice. So no, I'm, I myself never lost one, but I, I've been with one person who's lost one. Okay. That's pretty good. What about you, Dave? What kind of advice would you give someone that's wanting hmm. to pursue entrepreneurship? Uh, any business-minded person, I'd say... Um, clear up all your licensure, get a mentor, and get a website. Mm -hmm. so are, are, are websites essential now these days? Yes. As a, yeah, as a like jump off point, yes. Like nine times out of ten, if people hear of a new company, they go to Google and search it. So if, yeah, if you got a website or some type of something yeah. that'll pop up in a search engine, it's a good. Colin idea. can sell merchandise on his. D can schedule appointments on hers. Yeah, for sure. Nice. Schedule out. Even if it just like redirects you to an app, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, you need yeah. That. True. So but just to show up in the search engine, that's that's important. Mm -hmm. exactly. So where do you guys see your company in five years? Hopefully in everybody's belly. <laughs> <laughs> I hope in less than five years that would be in my belly. Uh, <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd like to see us teaching in schools, doing assemblies, and um, maybe have a, a brick-and-mortar shop open so people can come fly in a space where if it's raining or snowing with the wild weather we get in Maryland, that they'd have somewhere to just kind of hang out and fly. What, what part of Maryland are you from? You're uh, I'm originally from Germantown and then moved to Gaithersburg and now I'm in Frederick. Okay. So cool. I was going to say, you know what you could do? I can give you a recommend recommendation right now. Uh, I don't know if you've done it. Go to Montgomery County Recreation Department and create mm -hmm. your own class. And they oh, do, yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think they take 30%, but they do all your marketing. They do all your registration. All you have to do mm -hmm. is show up and teach a class. So if you can get like 10 flyers in there, three classes a week. That's a good start, you know, and establish yeah. the company's name. And yeah. Yeah. I'll hit them up for some information. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. Definitely. If you, if you need that, let me know. I know people at the County. So, oh, okay. All right. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. So, all right. So we're coming up to the end of our show and you both get 
full 30 seconds you know you can tell people what you're working on right now where to find you your plug something that you recommend something some type of advice or quote because we live in a time that you know a lot of people confuse peace with quietness and you know we just have a lot of negative things going on and we just want to make sure that we're trying to just stay connected with people and com you know communicate with them you know uh introduce people to your craft and your art and how you inspire the community and how you you make it as an entrepreneur and we need more entrepreneurs in the, in the market right now for for people especially the age of 30 and, and it's okay for people to start over and start your own business to make that residual income go out there and network and meet different people you guys have 30 seconds each um ladies first d would you like to go well, thank you. Thank you. Um, first off, gentlemen, thank you so much for having me on. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, again, I'm Dee with Dee's Delectables Catering. Um, I do home meals. I do catered events, um, daily meal deliveries, as Shaolin's about to experience, um, and uh, also do edibles, um, medicinal infused, um, top to bottom desserts to you know full meals uh and i serve the dc maryland and virginia area i'm on instagram and i'm on facebook and again hopefully very soon in y'all's bellies yes. nice. uh, and i am colin or heads if you want to look me up on youtube uh infinity loops is the group we can handle all of your FPV or aerial photography needs. And that's indoor, outdoor, weddings, birthdays, retail, flying through your store or whatever, make a commercial for you. We do our own editing as well. We'll cut a commercial for you up to 30 seconds. Just hit us up, Instagram, Infinity Loops, YouTube, Facebook, any of that. Uh, and if I had any advice to leave you with, uh, any entrepreneurs getting started, it is um, don't quit when you think you need to but also know when you need to quit or re-evaluate what direction you're heading. Know when you have just hit the wall and it's time to adjust. I think that's probably the hardest part is people have a hard time adjusting and letting go of something to, to try to grow further. Uh, I think that's it for me. And thank you all for having me. And I can't wait to have some of these food. <laughs> It's, it's all about these food right now. <laughs> I can still eat. It's not midnight yet. Well, you put the pictures up on the screen. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> mm. I know, right? Oh, my goodness. I had enough for to having her describe all of her dishes, and then you got to show them to me. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do like what you were saying about um, kind of almost like knowing your limits and when to right. say, hey, you know what? maybe this is not the right thing right now. Let me take a step back. And I feel like that goes with everything that we do in life. Um, a lot of people feel they get stuck and they linger and they need to realize that every person, I feel like every person is a book, right? Like you have your own chapters in your life. Now you get stuck looking at a chapter over and over again, you're not going to advance forward. And you know, then what happens at that point? And there's that saying, you know, when you do something repetitive, Look, seeking for a change and nothing changed. That's the one step into insanity. With that being said, that's the end of our show. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at The Fresh Delivery Show. If you like what you heard, you want to replay an episode, or, or just you want to see some new content from our Pop Thieves series on YouTube, you can also check us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Anchor. I am your host with the most. I am the Shaolin Fantastic. See ya! Grand Booba. <laughs> Kelso. Bye. <laughs> and we're out, y'all. Peace. <laughs>Yo, yo, yo, hello, beautiful, sexy people. Thank you for listening and tuning in to Fresh Delivery Show. You can view and listen to our episodes on our YouTube channel or listen from your favorite media source, Anchor, Apple, and Google Podcasts, iTunes, and the Google Play Music Store and Spotify. We appreciate you all. Stay safe, one love, and peace.